is that? Is it working now? My goodness gracious. It's good to see you guys. It's been a while and I am rusty. And I was already, I yeah, I messed up so bad that I was actually just uh, talking to myself. Frankie, what's up? Let's see if my chat reader works. Oh, hey, it's working good. Uh, let's get this, turn this up, to try and turn the speaker up a bit. Control panel, what voice do I want? Yeah, Zyra is fine. Uh, uh, all right, so I'm trying something a little different too with the, uh, the page that I'm drawing on. I got it on the side instead of, normally it's like this way. So I'm gonna turn it to the side and just fill up the whole screen. Uh, I'm gonna take this one off. My little warm up from yesterday. Let's see. So now I gotta line my page up. Where's my eraser? There it is. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay? Let's see, where's my chat reader too? I am all over the place. This is fun. It's been like a few months already. It goes by fast. I was studying for the uh, pharmacy exams in Texas to get licensed in Texas. And time just flew by. He's alive. <laughs> there it is. I'm alive, yes. And you guys are too. I'm so happy. Let's see. Um, AAR odd. <laughs> I love that chat reader. All right. Pencil. So I got to line up my page. Let's see, this is supposed to be straight. That's good, right? That looks pretty cool. I'm going to mark the top so I don't run off the uh, screen. <laughs> hey, victory hand smiling face with sunglasses. Nice. The queen has arrived. God save the queen. Hey, what's up? The queen's in the house. Uh, there you go. So now I know my borders. All right. This is kind of weird. It's a little bit smaller than I normally draw for the video. You're back live on YouTube. I'm back. And I'm really nervous. My hands are sweaty. This is good. Um, so I, I was trying to figure out what to draw. And at the last minute, I decided to try this guy here. Uh, he looks really, he looks like the uh, Riley rhythms already. <laughs> so I think it'll be really uh, cool kind of get our feet wet again, at least for me. Um, in the demo world. Let's hear your Spanish. Saludos de Mexico. Saludos de Mexico. Saludos de Mexico. And let's see, is it kind of dark in here? Oh, it's too late now. So anyway. Since I can't do my queen cracks anymore. It's not a British voice anymore, LOL. I don't know, sometimes it switches back and forth. Let me try, I wanna try one more. Cause I like that one too. I can change the chat. I can change the um, this, the voice. He's glad to know you're alive. Still thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I even been off of uh, like social media pretty much most of it. Uh, just been so busy trying to get the license in Texas and looking for a job. So let's try this voice. So anyway, um. I have a link to the reference if you guys want to draw along or draw uh, later or or whatever. <laughs> if you're just watching and hanging out at home, uh, that's cool too. Watching this guy draw. Um, yeah, so I, I'm going to go over the Riley Rhythms. It's my favorite thing. Uh, basic head construction along with the Riley Rhythms. It just really helps uh, lock everything together, especially with the planes of the face and the way the shadows fall on the face, the muscles. It's like a shorthand for uh, anatomy um, with all the uh, the bone structure and the muscles. She's from Kentucky. <laughs> That's a weird it's voice. It's okay, Brad, I have to go to work anyways. I'll watch it later, thumbs up. Nice. Bruce. Brigsby, what's up? Brigsby Gaming. Let's see. Insto. I'm trying to read the chat now. Oh, anyway, I'm gonna start before I get like 20 minutes in and I haven't done anything. That'd be terrible. Let's see, so I'm just gonna start off with the, the basic circle. He's a bald dude, so it's really easy. Like he is, like this is like the best photo I've seen in a while. Um, it's gonna be really fun. 
he's like a lean dude. Floyd, by the way, KC, our brother, the queen has to leave the stream for now, haha. -ha. But the queen sounds like a robot right now. I don't know why. But cool. Thanks for coming in and saying hi. Let's see. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm gonna be streaming again on normal time that I was doing before. Uh, for me, it's right around 11 a.m. And so I'm gonna be doing that again. Uh, that was a really good time for me. Let's see, how big do I want to make this guy? So I'm just gonna start off with the just a circle. It's like a guy who's seen some SH asterisk T. <laughs> Hope I have that up loud enough too. I tried a different speaker, I was trying to make it a little bit louder so we could hear it. So we got the basic circle. And I'm just gonna cut that in half, just, just right in the middle about. And that's gonna be my brow line. I, this, is, this is pretty much how I do all, the, um, all my drawings. You see me a lot, I'll do the, uh, the cross of the face. So I'll do that brow line and then I'll split it down the middle. And this comes from the Loomis. Uh, I think Loomis called it the cross of the face. And um, I just really like this way of drawing. Kind of like very s systematic and uh, brings it all together. I think that chat reader is lagging or something. Let's see. And then uh, you can see like uh, the three equal parts of the face. So like the hairline to the brow, brow to the bottom of the nose, bottom of the nose to the chin. You're looking at those three parts. Um, his looks like his bottom from the jaw to the nose is a little bit longer than the other thirds. Yeah, it's just a touch longer, which is pretty common. So if we just come up here to the hairline and we take that measurement from this line, which is the brow, and we take that measurement, then we come down here, then we can find the bottom of the nose. Because to me, it looks like they're pretty much equal. I think his nose might come down just a touch below that line. But in general, we just go like uh, two, like there are three can equal you parts. Can tell if a drawing is made from a picture versus life? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you can tell, uh, usually in the shadows, uh, if the shadows are blacked out heavy, um, then it's probably from a photograph in general. Because uh, when you're drawing from life, you can really see into the, the shadows because your eyes adjust and opens up the shadows a little bit and you can really get more detail than if you're looking at a photo. to understand the rhythms if you take the time to study the cranial anatomy and then the muscles of facial expression. Oh, yeah. You don't need to memorize them first, just get acquainted. Yeah, perfect. So uh, for him, I'm going to make that lower portion a little bit longer. He's got a little bit of a longer jaw. Everybody's different too. Um, if you're like looking at the Loomis, he, he sticks with the, the uh, three equal parts, like these will be all equal. But for our model, I think he's probably more, as we go down, the thirds are getting a little bit bigger, a little bit longer. So I'm just going to rough it out. And so that's our three equal parts. It's already starting to look like a face. You got the brow line, you got the nose, hairline, bottom of the chin. And now I'm gonna slice off the sides of that circle and kind of work on looking for that, that widest point of the head, which will be somewhere over here. That'll be the parietal eminence. So first I'm gonna just kind of slice off one side of that circle. And then on the other side, and hopefully I got, <laughs> hopefully I got pretty equal. All right, that's good. Prefer to call it a bro line. A bro line. <laughs> uh, I like that. I'm gonna call it the bro line for now on. Who said that? That was funny. <laughs> so again, we have the hairline, the bro line, bottom of the nose, and the bottom of the chin. So I'm kind of just the. Uh, bringing that, basically that head shape, that skull shape, cranium, uh, over to these wider points and down into that side angle. So we sliced off the sides of the head. Let me clean this up a little bit. Oh, it feels good to be back, it really does, but man, I'm a little, I haven't been this nervous <laughs> in a while. I'm trying to remember the last time I was this nervous on a uh, live stream, besides like the first time. I think, which drawing was that? Oh, that when I did the uh, the Frazetta girl with the two tigers, yeah, that was 
if you want to see me panic, <laughs> you want to see me have a meltdown, eternal meltdown, watch that live stream. That, that, that nearly killed me. So we have this nice head shape. I might bring this up a little bit more because I'm looking at his shape. So the thing is, like, I'm using a method of drawing, right? The rhythms of the head, the structure of the head, the thirds of the face, but I'm also looking at a model. So I'm trying to, like, adjust it to that. So th what the uh, formulae formulaic way of drawing with the, uh, the basic head construction, like with the Loomis or the, the Riley rhythms, it gets you in the ballpark really fast, and then you can adjust to the model as you need to. So then I'm just going to come down here and work on this overall chin shape and he's got a lot of nuances he's got like a flare jaw a little bit you can see like the uh, the fat pads have come down a little bit and and that mid cheek furrow and stuff like that around the chin but we'll put that detail in towards the end I'm just trying to get the overall head shape and then I'm looking for his side of his neck and that big muscle of the neck the sternocleidomastoid that big muscle that comes down sometimes like you'll see people draw a circle here and they'll feed that neck muscle off of that. So that represents the sternum. And then you have the sternal head of the big neck muscle, the sternocleidomastoid. You can kind of feed that off there. Bad greetings from Ireland. Ireland, what's up? That's awesome. It's a crazy world. I can talk to everybody around the world. So much fun. When I was a kid, like that, that that was like sci-fi. Now I'm living. Now I'm living in a sci-fi, sci-fi movie. It's crazy. Then I'm gonna look for just the rhythm for that 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 um, trapezius on the back, back side of the neck, and again using those really basic forms for like the shape of the shirt. Oh, where's that book at? I was gonna. Have you guys seen this book? Um, I recently heard about it, maybe like a year ago, and, and it's funny because I'll buy a book, and, and then a year later I'll open it. <laughs> this book, uh, Drawing a uh, Textbook by Bruce uh, McIntyre, and it, it's like very um, basic, but you know what? I, I actually learned a lot just reading the first chapter, and he's talking about how, how important it is to learn how to draw just for everybody, right? But he also broke, broke it down into, uh, I think it was seven, was it seven uh, areas? Yeah, seven laws of perception. So you have the surface, size, surface lines, overlapping, shading, density, and foreshortening. And I just never saw that before, like broken down like that. And it just has all kinds of lessons. And, and I don't know. I don't know if you guys seen this before, but this is a really good book. I wish I went through this when I was a kid. Look, he even has an ear on here. So I don't know. I was thinking about just maybe going through this in the live streams and just having fun with it, like the different lessons. I don't know, it just looks like a lot of fun. And also, it, I think it'd be really good for me to really just go over this stuff again, even though it's like so fundamental, but I never even heard of it, of there being seven laws of perception. And the book recommendations list. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it just blew my mind that there was actually, um, I don't know. It, I just never heard of it, and it's been out forever. I think the, I think it came out in the '60s or something like that. I wish I had that when I was a kid. Look at that stream. You actually did a great presenter study. This commitment is ten minutes late, rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> yeah, the presenter one. That was. Uh, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have tried to do a figure and two lions or tigers, whatever it was. It was way too much. Oh, I th let me see if I can get this a little bit lighter. Yeah, it looked a little too uh, dark there. Maybe that's better. Australia, Brad, love your work, mate. Thumbs up. What's up? Thanks for coming. Um, okay, where am I? Oh, let's do the ears. Like the since we already have that's the other thing too about this um, this reference. He's straight. He's looking straight at us, so his ears aren't like when you look up, the ears drop down. If you look down, the ears go up. So he's looking directly at us, so his ears line up perfectly with the Loomis basic fundamental head structure. So if we take that brow line, or bro line, <laughs> straight across, that's the top of the ear, and we take the nose, come straight across, and that's the bottom of the ear. So now we can just block that in. 
a very basic shape to start start with and a lot of times if you just block things in it really saves you a lot of like headache and you can first look at the big shapes and then come in at smaller shapes and even smaller and then more detail so like here we have this really basic shape for the ear but then we can come in and do like a nice little curve then round out the top of the ear come down for the earlobe and then you can see that that helix on the top coming down into the kind of the rhythm of the cheek even you can see that big s curve you can simplify things too it's really fun and this is we're not doing a hardcore trying to make it look like the guy kind of portrait we're just looking at the rhythms so so just sort of starting off with the big shapes and then kind of you know carving it down like going to the smaller and smaller details it's really fun let's see and it's it's a lot easier than trying to just go all the way into the details really fast all right so now we can do the same thing um, the big block shape starting off with the nose and the, the keystone shape which is right between the eyes it's this nice little wedge kind of a shape they call it a keystone or glabella if you want to get super scientific and then his nose looks pretty wide so I can kind of come down and draw that border of the overall structure of the nose just looking at that overall shape this is such a fun way to draw and see so for the big cartilage we're going to use another mother form another just basic shape the oval I don't know if he did any portraits in this book. I don't think he might. I think he had a, maybe one or two, but not very many. But he used a lot of uh, mother forms. The largest box comes first. The he, envelope, right? The smaller shapes will tell you if they fit or do not fit, whether you were accurate with the large gestural proportions. Perfect. That's exactly, yeah, that's, I should, I'm gonna have to write that down. <laughs> that was like a very, very good explanation. Yeah, it lets you see how accurate you got like in relationship to everything else around it too. So we got this nice, it's just a very basic rhythm for the nose. And then you can come up here, look for the that little shape for the uh, cartilage of the nose and you just start adding little details to it. Uh, let's go back over here. He has a really interesting jaw shape too. You see like his cheekbones are pretty far out uh, yeah, it looks pretty far out. Usually, um, I think his, he almost has it where his cheekbones are almost further out, f wider than the um, point of the head, the parietal eminence. Usually this point is the widest point of the entire head, but he has such strong cheekbones that they actually look like they might come outside that line right there. So that's a pretty cool, um, observation of his uh, type, his, the way he looks. So we can kind of like play with that shape a little bit more, push that cheekbone out, flare it out a little wider than our parietal eminence. And that's this point right here. You get like, usually that's the widest point. So usually what the face is doing, if you start right here, you have a, a flaring happening with the head. So everything's like, flowing outwards. Let's see. You decide where to put the glabella. I always struggle with that measurement. I, <laughs> I usually go too wide. It's, yeah. Uh, to tell you the truth, like when I'm drawing on my own, I pretty much just f look at the distance between the shadow shapes of the inside of the brow or the eyebrows. And uh, yeah. So let's, okay, let's go here to that big uh, circle rhythm for the frontal bone. It's a really important one. You can kind of see it on him pretty good, especially on this side and the shadow side. And this uh, this shape will differ depending on the person. Sometimes they're really small. Some people actually have a square shape. It's really interesting. Like you'll see the um, light hit, and you see like a little square right in the middle. Um, but generally, we draw it with a circle, and then we can do the uh, temporal side. So what you have is the um, plane change from the front side to the side. So you're coming around the top and then it's cutting off to the side. Let's see. 
let's try to line these up a little bit better. And sometimes you can see a really nice kind of like a separation between this line and this line here. And there'll be like this little ridge where uh, some light will catch. And you'll see a little plane change there too, or change in um, value or something like that. So these, these rhythms really help us to see those little nuances in the face. And a lot of times you want to take your, like the shape from one side to the other to connect them so you get them lined up. So drawing from side to side helps a lot. I really like doing that. You can kind of see the structure of the brow developing when you do that. And let's see. Let's look at the mouth. Let's check this rule of thumb that I learned that the bottom lip, the very bottom of the bottom lip, is the halfway point between the bottom of the chin and the nose. Because a lot of times, especially when I first started drawing portraits, I would always draw the mouth too far down because I thought the lips were right at the halfway mark, but they're actually a little higher. And so I would just try to guess my way. And then I read somewhere or heard somewhere that if you make the bottom ridge or the bottom lip at the halfway mark, then your, your lips will sit pretty close to where they're supposed to be. So let's try that out on him. Let's see what, <laughs> see if that works. So I'm gonna take a measurement of my pencil and thumb. I got the image on the TV in front of me in, the, in my room here. So I'm gonna measure from his chin to the bottom of his lip, the very bottom edge of his lip. And then bring it up to the bottom lip. It looks pretty close actually. I didn't, I didn't uh, check beforehand, but I think it actually might work. So let's see, I'm gonna try to find the halfway mark. So that's about right here. That's about right. So that's the bottom of the bottom lip. And that should be about halfway between the chin and the nose. Let's see, that's close enough. My lines are pretty blurry and thick, so I'm gonna call that the halfway mark between this point and this point. So, now we can place the bottom line of the upper lip and get a pretty good sense of where the mouth will sit on this line somewhere right here. And now I'm looking for the nodes of the mouth. That's the corners of the mouth in relationship to the nostrils. And I'm going to just put them about right here just slightly. Not too, his mouth isn't too wide. So it's not really narrow so I'm just gonna estimate about right there and here's his upper lip actually he has like a little curve right here then it kind of almost like a smirk his upper lip is pretty full and that comes over I probably made <laughs> I think I made it a little bit too uh, curvy let's see I remember one of the live streams, I, I think it was one of the first ones I've done, I uh, did. I was drawing some lips on this, um, this girl and she had like really full lips and I just went way overboard. So I gotta remember not to do that. So that looks pretty good as far as like the distance from the top to the bottom. So it's a rule of thumb uh, as far as the placement of the mouth. Um, Brad, glad to see you back. Thank you. Thanks for coming back on Saturday night. Let's see. And then the bottom lip. I'll just curve it over here. And so there's all kinds of stuff going on in this mouth right here too. And when I first learned the Riley rhythm, uh, especially the uh, the muzzle line, the nasolabial, and that the second line that comes around, that mid cheek furrow, those two lines. When I first learned that, I couldn't not see it after that. I was like. Once I learned it, I saw it everywhere. Every person I talked to, every person I saw, like at the mall or something, I, I couldn't believe it. And some people it's really, really deep, and some people you can barely see it. So it's just really fun to, uh, when you learn that rhythm, it's, it's amazing. So the first one is the nasal labial, because it refers to that, that anatomy, but you can just call it the muzzle line. And there's two of them, there's one up here and one down here. So this first one on him kind of wraps around like this. Fairy hands, cool to see you again. Fairy <laughs> Yes. Hey, Fong, what's up? 
Yeah. SEO I hope for auto. Now. Hopefully, I can stay next stream. Yeah, Monday, Monday uh, at the old time, pretty much um, 11 a.m. I'll, I'll post it after this. I'm going to get back into it. I'm going to do it as long as I can until I, I have to, when I get my new job, and we'll see what my new schedule will be. But uh, for right now, let's, let's get back to it. Uh, so yeah, so you have this nice rhythm. You can pull it all the way through if you want, but generally I don't because I'm just, I, just, I don't want to mark up this section too much. And then you can use the other one that comes off, comes off that tear trough groove in the eye, and then it comes all the way over. These rhythms really help you place the the placement of the eye, and just get gets everything lined up. It's really really good. Uh, Love to see you draw hand. an open jaw pose. The hinge of the jaw can be deceiving. Oh, the yeah. lips are movable flesh and can vary immensely. Pretty much the only constant will be the immovable maxilla. Yeah, or the uh, the brow. But then, yeah, then you have the eyebrows that kind of move up and over the, the bony structure. So, yeah, you're right. The maxilla is pretty much, just pretty much the skull stays the same, but the facial landscape Our keeps video shifting. video is really helpful. I level up my skill because of that video. Oh, nice. Cool. Thanks. I'm glad you watched it and enjoyed it. Um, so another thing, too, under the mouth, you have the, they call it the column of the mouth. And there's like these... This is another thing, like when I first learned this, I was like, oh my gosh, how come I never learned this before? <laughs> but it, it comes from the corner of the mouth and it comes up and over. It's almost like a W. You can see like this W shape. Brad, how are you? Good, how are you? The chat reader doesn't say who's saying what, but I see. Ramsey, what's up? Fong, I miss you, Fong. Let's see, uh, so let me redo the structure of the jaw. Now that we got more information, and we can really get into hopefully the likeness of the person a little bit more. His jaw is really interesting because he has that big cheekbone, and then he comes in at an angle, and then the back side of his jaw he has like that very masculine flaring of the uh, the corner of the jaw. So we have this over here, and then where? Let's see, where is his? So we have like a ligament down here on both sides. It's the mandibular cutaneous ligament. And it looks like it's about right here. And that's a really important area, especially when you're drawing somebody a little bit older and their face starts to adjust to their age. To say, <laughs> to say that nice, when they get old, <laughs> when you start to look really old, and uh, I'm like right there. <laughs> I'm watching my face every day get a little bit deeper in the, uh, the grooves. So then we come over here, we can see that, that little bump in that jaw, right? You can see that little detail. And then we can come down here in the chin. I can tell I'm really timid on this drawing too. I'm like drawing the same line over and over again. That's all right. Let's see, let's come over here, bring this one in. So this comes over here, we're gonna make this line a little bit darker and sharper because that jawline is in the foreground and this one's in the back so that can get a little bit softer and I think that's what item is that that's density no that's uh it's one of the laws I think that is the struggle with the shaping that's probably the density or the surface law <laughs> in the book That'd be really cool to take this book and when like... When they design the coolest robot faces, they definitely make use of aging wrinkle lights. Oh, yeah? I assume it makes us empathize with the artificial face more. Oh. Hello, regards from Brazil. Hey, Brazil. That makes sense. Because, uh, like, an older person, I also... Yeah, and also you probably feel, like, a little bit more respect towards the... Uh, the... Uh, person because they look older too I don't know like maybe they, you feel like they know more <laughs> they're manipulating our uh, DNA our way we're programmed that's terrible oh man the robots they're taking over let's see so we got the got the throat over here we don't have to do too much but usually you're like I don't know I feel like that big muscle is like the probably one of the most important pieces of the neck that um it's overlooked a lot. So if you just know that sternal cladomastoid, 
It has three connections. It connects to the sternum, the clavicle, and right behind the ear uh, on the mastoid. That's where its name comes from. That's just a really, if you just take a little bit of time and learn that, it's so worth it. It's a really cool, um, it's, it really helps a lot when you see like, like the shadow shapes on the neck. Like maybe, let's see what time it is. Yeah, maybe we'll do like some of the shadow mapping too on this and you'll see how, because a lot of times when I was first starting out, I was like, I would get to the neck and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening with the shadow. So I just like kind of like do something really simple. And uh, all my early drawings, you can see that I just do like a big simple like S curve or something because I don't know what what's happening. But after you know about that muscle, then you just like, oh yeah, because like if I drew like contour lines on it, it's kind of curved over like this. And then it kind of flattens out on this one side over here. And then this gets really curvy. And then this part is really flat. It's like a ribbon. So when you get a shadow that comes over, I'll just go ahead and do it. So you get like this cast shadow underneath the chin. And it kind of goes over his Adam's apple a little bit there. And then it comes down. Right down into about right here. And you can see it kind of curves over, a little cast shadow kind of curves over that. And if you know that, it helps a lot. If you know that, that, that structure a little bit. And it's gonna bump over that sternal head. Cause it's almost like a tube. And then as it goes further up, it starts to flatten out and turns into like a ribbon shape. So depending on how the light hits the form. Well, there is definitely emotional empathy involved in good design, right? Oh, yeah. Whether they are conscious of it or not, we are willing to notice and listen to the elder for their wisdom, like you said. Yeah, they're hacking our brain. They're hacking our uh, structure, our society. <laughs> That's a good point, though. I never even thought about it like that. Oh, yeah. Probably the voice, too, if you hear like an older voice AI talking to you, I, I would imagine I would probably like, like oh, okay, he must know. <laughs> he must know something that I don't. I probably believe it more. All right, so uh, we've got this nice mid cheek furrow. That's what this line is called, or you can say like the muzzle line, one of the two. And let's go down into the cheek rhythm, uh, the Riley rhythms. And there's there's three the robots that can draw anything in any style in a minute. Oh no! I'll declare war on anyone who <laughs> makes that robot AI. I'll, I'll be Especially there with you. Especially if it's a British old man or woman, lol. Oh, that's Brad, true. I can't believe you are giving this class for free. <laughs> this is a master class in portrait structure. You are the man. <laughs> I do my best. I'm real rusty, but I appreciate it. But yeah, uh, I'll be there with you in the uh, the the war against the uh, really good art AIs. <laughs> I'll still draw. I just won't. I just probably won't draw online if the if the uh, the robots are doing it better than anybody else can. Um, okay, let's place the eyes. So uh, to so we got this border right here. That's one border. We got the brow line. That's another border. And so we can use this cheek rhythm that comes up from the corner of the mouth, touches the the nostril, and then goes all the arches over to the ear. So that's a really cool rhythm you'll see in the Riley and also just pretty much any rhythm system you use this one. And of course you can see this one that comes off the uh, helix a little bit and then it comes down. And there's also a third one where you don't touch the nose, you just go from the corner of the mouth and you go up to the ear. So there's basically three different ways you can do it. There's probably more. Um, I, most of the time I just hit this one right here but for him, it looks like... You only work with art. <laughs> I don't know what that said. Um, I think this one works pretty well for him. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And the, the point of these rhythms is to... It's almost like your hand is tracking it, but you're not drawing it. So at first you learn how to draw it. And then do you, you want robot art or human art? Seeing as how its perception and a robot's perception is spot on, it's just a photo, unless you have defective eye robots turned to art. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's getting so philosophical. 
So they can go, oh man, I don't want to talk too much about the AIs. It'll break my brain. There's so much I don't know about them. Um, so yeah, so now we got this border, bottom border for the eye socket, and that's why I like that for him. It looks like it, it fits that uh, shape of his face. So now I can see pretty clearly about where the, actually I think this one does work better. It gives me a little bit more room for his eye socket. Yeah, okay. So now we know, I'm gonna use this line right here as the border for the eyeball. This one right here for this side, and then basically the eyeball is gonna tuck underneath the brow, because that's what the brow, the brow is there to protect the eyeball. That's why you have that really heavy bone right up front. When you get punched in the head, your eyes don't get damaged as much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so just we can place that eyeball right there. And now he's starting to look like a cyborg, some weird creepy thing. What was I watching on Netflix last night? It was like a new show. It was almost like uh, it was like apocalyptic uh, different episodes. It was like almost like a Black Mirror, but I forgot the name of it. Uh, the first one was like some weird aliens coming down, um, basically eating everybody. And then the other one was I forgot. I think I don't remember. Anyway, this reminded me of that, like the eyeballs, like the crazy zombies and stuff. Um, Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting off track. So I was trying to use this line or this line to kind of feel where the eyeball is going to sit. So now we have a nice structure. Uh, let's go ahead and draw this one just to keep it the same from side to side. Again, you, get, you have your options depending on how the person looks. You can use this really, this longer one, this longer arching one that touches the nose and comes over to the ear. And my favorite though is coming off that Love helix. Death and robots. I don't know. It wasn't that. It was something really weird. It didn't sound like it was going to be a scary show. And I can't think of it right now because my brain is on the drawing. <laughs> it's funny. Like my brain shuts off. Like half half my brain shuts off while I'm trying to draw, and uh, I can't think. It's so, so funny. I can't. I can't remember names. What am I doing right now? Okay, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. And uh, okay, let me just look at my thing I got going uh, his chin looks a little too wide that's okay we're not getting really crazy right I was trying to give myself an out early on by saying we're not doing full-on likeness um, let's work on the eye structure a little bit more some fly just came over me <laughs> it's like buggy here in uh, Texas right now so like we did for the brow structure we're going from side to side you can do that for the bottom section of the brow as well and kind of Bring that from one side to the other, a nice arch, like boom, side to side, side to side. And now I'm gonna look for the inside corner of the eye. And you can use a plumb line with your pencil, you can just look, you can guess. It looks, I think I, I did make his nose a little bit narrow, more narrow than um, I see. Let's see, I can probably bring that out a little bit more. But his inside corner is somewhere right here, coming up. And it really just depends on the model. If you're doing like a, a Luma's head or something, or a structure, or, or a, what do you call it, like, like a method. Watch your videos off your Patreon. What was that? Oh, you did? Nice, thanks. Frankie, thank you. Um, a lot of times they'll take the, the outside nostril and they come straight up to the corners. And it really just depends. But uh, a rule of thumb, that's, that's a really nice rule of thumb is like two vertical lines coming straight off the outside of the nostril. But again, if you have like a wider nose, then you know, the corner of the eyes might be further in in relationship. It really, 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 really depends on the person. But that's a good rule of thumb. Uh, let's see. Wow, there's a lot of that's a lot of lines. <laughs> I didn't realize there were that many. Uh, so that so we got the inside corner, and his eyes are pretty much straight across. Because sometimes the outside corner will be a little bit higher. That that tends to be for like uh, like females uh, in general, or sometimes lower. Like I think like bedroom eyes. Like some people have like those really kind of droopy, not droopy, but like slanted. Bed, they call them bedroom eyes. So it depends on the person's type. His goes straight across. So the outside corner of both are pretty much just straight. So we can just. Kind of come over here and just 
estimate where the outside corner will be. And there's this rhythm that pe I see some people use and I actually learned this, but I don't really use it that much. Let's see if it works here. So you can do like the sweeping C curve from side to side for the shape of the eyelid. And then we'll come over here. And again, I'm gonna take this all the way over. Oh, what I was talking about before with the lines. So when you get all this, all these rhythm lines down to memory, um, you won't actually draw them uh, most of the time, but your hand will still track. It's really interesting. It's like a grid system that you, you make your brain learn, and then it helps you look for things, like to connect things together, connect shadow shapes. So you're, you're like, oh, that shadow right there, you know what it is, you know there's a rhythm there, so you might, your hand will be tracking until it hits that point where it wants to make the shadow. So it's a really good system for your hand. But at first, you have to memorize it. So you have to do like <laughs> a thousand drawings where you're just trying to remember and, uh, and practice using these, these rhythm lines. But once you have it in your brain, you don't have to make the lines necessarily. So you get to choose, pick and choose um, which lines you want to use. I don't know if that made any sense, but basically, uh, you don't have to draw all these lines when you're doing a portrait but it helps to know them because then you'll see these, these rhythms, you'll see these relationships between different shapes and shadow shapes in anatomy. So it'll look like, this fly keeps buzzing around me. So it'll look like you know a lot of anatomy and you may not, you may not know any of the names of the muscles or anything, but if you know the rhythms, it, your, your portrait just looks really good. Like it looks solid. It looks like you know every muscle and every tendon attachment. It's really it's a really cool shorthand for anatomy. So let's go back to the eye. I was trying this thing. Let's see. It kind of works on him. We can do that little loop, and you get this little pocket right here. Usually, sometimes it's really black right there. Uh, light can't get in there very well. And so, when this this fly, this is the uh, live stream fly that's bothering me. He's gonna fly into my mouth, and I'm gonna gag. <laughs> so, all right, so we got the upper eyelid. Let's do the bottom eyelid. And a lot of times the eyes, you'll do like, like let's look at this side and see. So you have like this upper eyelid shape and then the bottom shape will come over here. So you get like this, this angle. You have like a point down here and a point above and it creates like this, this, um, this angle instead of being perfect straight up like that, like an almond shape. It's more of a, I don't know what to call it. It's like a asymmetrical shape. And it looks better too. So you can look for that in his eye. You can kind of see that on this side as it tucks in. I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit, but yeah, you can see that pretty well. Let's, see, let's get the upper eyelid fold. It's got really thick upper eyelids, I didn't realize that. Let's make that little correction for that pocket inside. I like how his brow like kind of covers up, overlaps the upper eyelid just a little bit. Man, I forgot what it was like to talk and draw at the same time. It's like a skill, skill to have, I guess. It's hard to do. Let's see, let's go over right here, clean this one up a little bit. And, oh, wow, that other eye is so much different. You can see the uh, skin kind of folds down and covers up. That's so strange, like this side is a lot different than this side. You can really see his upper eyelid on this side and this one, it's, it's covered up a bit with the, uh, the skin from the brow kind of like hanging down. So that's really cool. So they're not exactly the same. So we can you can decide if you want to change that or try to keep this like a study that you can refer to. That helps a lot too if you like make studies out of these. Like I'll ha I have a bunch where when I was studying them, I try to make like almost like a reference for myself, and then I would hang them on the wall. Like I, got, <laughs> I actually got two up there right now. I wish I could turn the camera around, but um, just like like structures of the head, um, 
basic, uh, what do you call it, planes of the head. Just, I just like to have them up when I'm trying to remember certain things. And it's like, it's like a visual um, lesson. Like every time I come in, I kind of like go over it a little bit. Well, you know, it's for like five, five seconds when I look at it. Yeah, it's really good, especially for anatomy. If you make like little studies like, like this and then you have like the names everywhere, it helps you remember, helps you to practice. It's like having a, like a educational poster in your room or something. Let's see, let's come over here. So we got this bottom eyelid structure and let's clean this up. You see this triangle almost from his eye socket. And on him, you can see the, the deep uh, hollowing in his cheeks right here. So we can kind of adjust these rhythms if you want to show that a little bit. So you see like this little triangle right here, this little sliver. That's where the, the fat pads have sunken in a little bit. They shifted and now he's got like this nice grooving. These really strong cheekbones. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it like this. I don't want to go too much into like shadow. Maybe a little bit on the forehead. Let's see. Comes down. So the shadows are following along with those rhythms. And be that's because that's pretty much just the structure of the head. That's the anatomy and all that. And you can see like this nice structure we did for the nose. We can follow along and do like a nice core shadow along that ridge. Comes up into here. I can kind of hint at the shadowing on this side. And those shadows will follow along those rhythms real nice. And it really just helps guide you as you're drawing. I love this, this way of drawing using the, the Riley rhythms. Let's get a little form on the eye. Give it like a little three-dimensional look. And the shadow has a, he has a bit of a cast shadow, but it's really soft on his, on this side. I'm going really gentle on the shading because so I don't want to lose the lines too much in case you guys want to try to follow along and see those rhythms. Let me try to make it a little bit darker too. Yeah, so this is called the Riley rhythm. There's all kinds of different uh, rhythm uh, methods out there. And they kind of kind of helps to look at all of them and see which ones you like the most. Cause You'll see different rhythms in different people too, depending on their uh, their likeness, the way their their face is structured, how old they are, things like that. Like sometimes, like I was saying, like the forehead will be a square shape versus this nice circle, and it really just depends on the person's type. So let me just clean up these lines. So this is a really fun one because he is set up perfectly for the Riley method with a little bit of variation in his uh, the structure of his eye from one side to the other was a little bit different from one from one side to the other that was kind of cool so I think we're pretty much done with this little Riley warm-up cool thank you guys for coming I really appreciate it um, sorry I dropped off the face of the earth um, but again, like I said, I was studying for the, uh, the board exam uh, for pharmacy here in Texas. And I am licensed now in California and Texas, and I'm currently living in Texas. So, uh, yeah, that was hard. That was a, it, was a, it, was a good, it was a good test. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I passed it or not after I took it. It was really long. It was several hours. It was all kinds of... It's like every question, it felt like... I was confused, <laughs> but I think it's just like an illusion because I, uh, I don't know if you hit like a really bad Congrats. question. You the man. Uh, if you hit like a really bad question, and then 
you bring that energy into the next question, right? So it's like after a while, you just feel like the whole thing was a lo like a loss. But um, yeah, I made it through. I survived. So now we're looking looking for a, a nice pharmacy job somewhere. And uh, I got a couple lined up, uh, some interviews coming up, and uh, we'll see. So thanks, guys. I hope that uh, the screen... Oh, look, I had the chat reader as off, but it wasn't. Uh, I'm rusty. I'm rusty on the uh, live stream, but... Again, uh, Monday. I'm going to be on uh, Monday at uh, 11 a.m. Hey, how you can explain chat and joke while you draw. Very impressive. <laughs> it's hard. I'm sweating. <laughs> My hands are so sweaty. <laughs> It's so gross. I don't want to touch the paper because when you get like the charcoal and the uh, and, you, and it mixes with your hand sweat, it's, it's, it'll. Uh, uh, Aiden's nervous system is a beautiful machine. If you consciously study and practice multiple things, the brain will draw from your knowledge and apply the most optimal strategy without R thought. Really? Wow. Thank you for the live stream and the advice, smiley face. Thanks for watching. Um, Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's why I like the, I like this chat reader because you guys can like tell me all kinds of cool stuff. Like I learned a lot from you guys <laughs> the last few months since like what I think uh, December last year, and then I took like what three months, two two and a half months off. But yeah, you guys teach me all kinds of stuff. But yeah, again, I'm gonna check out this book and see if I can kind of like go through it. Maybe I don't know, practice with it on the live streams. I don't know. It looks really cool. You can design secret cities using these different uh, seven laws of perspective, which I never learned. <laughs> I mean, I use all of them, but I never knew they had like a name or I just never appreciated them before. So I might work through some of this and, and along with the portraits as well. So I don't know. I think that'll be fun. So Smiley face. thanks guys. I appreciate it a lot. And uh, this is great. It's great to be back. And oh good, it's an hour. Cause I told I told Jana that I, I would uh, it only be an hour, and she's like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "I think so. I'm gonna try." <laughs> so, all right, guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you on Monday. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna draw yet. Uh, if you guys got any um, ideas, just leave them in the comments, um, and uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Appreciate it.